everyone, it's Naomi Akinaika from Encouragement from the Word of God. God is faithful. He is good. As we continue learning about God's names, today the beautiful name that we are calling God is Messiah. If you have heard the name Messiah was given to Jesus, Jesus is Messiah. And what does Messiah mean? Messiah means the anointed with oil, the anointed one, the one who is anointed with oil. So Jesus was the chosen one. He was the Messiah. And when in, the, in Israel, people were waiting for the Messiah to come and rule. <clears throat> and when Jesus was born in the manger as a baby, and as Jesus came, when he was 30 years old, he started his ministry. And people couldn't recognize that Jesus was Messiah because they were looking for a, a fighter. They were looking for a king. And Jesus was truly the Messiah. He came as a humble person and he lived on this earth and he performed miracles and he taught his disciples and he saved you and me from sin, from temptations, from sickness, from bondage. And he has taken the curse upon him and he became Messiah, the Savior, the Anointed One for us. So today we're going to discover more about what does Messiah means and that how we we have found the Messiah. So we're going to, uh, Messiah is Jesus, so we're going to have some glimpse of what Jesus did on earth. Jesus um, Jesus was prophesied by John the Baptist before Jesus um, started his ministry. And John the Baptist uh, said that, I am not Christ, but I have been sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, the joy of mine is now complete. He must increase, but I must decrease. So John the Baptist prophesied about Jesus the Messiah and said that he must increase and I must decrease. John the Baptist was there proclaiming about Jesus' coming and asking people to prepare the way to get their hearts ready for Messiah, that is Jesus Christ. <clears throat> And Jesus, our Messiah, was the sin-removing lamb. He's the lamb who's, who took the sin upon himself and was sacrificed for our sin, for our shame, for our unrighteousness, for our sicknesses. So in the Bible it says, in, um, it says in John um, chapter 29, it says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, that is what he said. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He has come to take, take your sin, my sin, upon himself. He is the Savior. He is Messiah, our Jesus Christ. And then he came not for the righteous but for the sinners. Jesus didn't come to save the righteous because the righteous are already saved. But he came to save the sinners, sinners like you and me. He not only came for Jews, he came for the Gentiles like you and me. He came for you and me to die. And he came looking for the lost sheep <clears throat> who was lost. He had the 99 sheep, but he came for the one that was lost. And that was you and me. So it says in Mark chapter 2 verse 17, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Jesus says to everyone, I came not to call the righteous, but I came to call the sinners. Those who need a doctor has a doctor, but I came for those who are sick. Jesus has come for you and me. He is the Messiah. He is Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And Jesus is the giver of spiritual sight. Before Jesus came on earth, people were blind. People were blind in the world. But Jesus gave us spiritual sight. We have sight now. We see what is right. We see what is wrong. God has taken away the blindness that we had that was covering, the sin that was easily covering us. And he gave us sight. And then uh, he says, come and you will see. <clears throat> that is, Jesus turned 
and call people to follow him. And Jesus said, um, come and you will see. Jesus gave the sight to the blind, not only spirit, not only physical blind, but spiritually blind. You and I, we are spiritually blind and God gave us sight. And Nicodemus, he said to Nicodemus, who came to see Jesus and said, that you have to be born again. And Nicodemus asked, how can I be born again? I'm a grown up man. And Jesus was saying, if you confess your sins, and if you ask Jesus to come into your heart and accept him in your heart, you're going to be born again. You're going to be increasing your spiritual sight. You will be having a spiritual birth. So Jesus came. You know, Jesus found you and me and gave us spiritual sight. And the next one is Jesus is Messiah. And it says, um, he first found his own brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ. We will say <coughs> more about um, when uh, <coughs> his disciples, Andrew, found, um, found uh, Jesus and he recognized that he, Jesus, is Messiah. He went and found Simon and said, we have found the Messiah. Have you found Messiah in your heart? Have you found Jesus Christ in your heart? Are you going to tell others about Jesus? Are you going to testify to his goodness in your life? Are you going to tell others so that they would be seeing Jesus as their own Messiah? And the next one is Jesus can change our identity. Do you all have an identity? And Jesus really can change your identity. For Jesus given an identity. People will give you identity. You will have an identity card saying this is where you live and this is what you do. But Jesus will give you a whole total identity. He will erase everything. He called Peter and said, Peter, I will call you no more. Um, I will no, no more call you Simon, but I will call you Peter. You're going to be the rock that uh, Jesus has chosen. So God will give us identity. God will give identity to you. God will choose you. Jesus will choose you. Jesus the Messiah will choose you and give you the identity. And the next one is, He chose us. Jesus chose people. Jesus came and chose the disciples. And Jesus has chosen you and me. If you have accepted Jesus into your heart, that means He has chosen you and appointed you. He already knows. It says, no one can come to, to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Do you know that no one can come to Jesus unless God appoints them and chooses them? It says in John chapter 6, verse 44, God appoints you. God chooses you. And he is called. God calls you. And that's how we come to Jesus. It says, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Unless God sends you to Jesus, nobody will be chosen. So we should be so overjoyed that God has chosen us and that we have known Jesus Christ as our Messiah. And he knows our circumstances, whatever we are going through. He sees our heart. He sees everything about us. He knows our heart. And he says, can you, um, can you hide anything from God? You can't hide anything because he knows our heart. And he understands anything that you are going through. If you're going through a difficult time, a trial, a tribulation, whatever you're going through, it might be unique to yourself. But Jesus understands and he knows. And God is faithful to uh, save you because he is Jesus Messiah. He is the anointed one. He is the savior and he can save you. I hope you were encouraged today to trust Jesus and know that Jesus is, he is your Messiah. He is the Savior of the world. And He is the Anointed One. Let's praise Jesus. Let's acknowledge Jesus. Let's tell about Jesus in <clears throat> our life with everyone we know. And proclaim that Jesus is Messiah. I hope you were encouraged today. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you. We thank you that you are Messiah. We thank you that Jesus... God have chosen us and for and sent us to you, Jesus, that we have been priorly chosen by God and sent to you so that we would recognize you, that we would have spiritual sight to our life, Lord. Lord, we thank you for touching our hearts and choosing us and appointing us. Lord, I pray that you would bless our life, Lord. 
I pray that every word we speak, everything we do, that we will do for your glory, for your honor, for your praise. Lord, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Use our words and our deeds and our actions for your glory to proclaim the good news that Jesus, you are Messiah, the Son of God, the Almighty God, the Mighty One. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope you were blessed today. I just want to sing to you as we are singing carols. I want to sing, O oh, Come All You Faithful. I know that you know this beautiful song. And if you can, please sing with me. I'm going to put the lyrics as well, um, uh, the, the song as well, so let's see how it goes. Grammarly does more than catch errors. With Grammarly, you can find really good... Sorry, the advertisement came. Oh, come all you faithful. Joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Sing choirs of angels, sing in exaltation. Sing, all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God, glory in the highest. O oh, come, let us adore Him. O oh, come, let us adore Him. O oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. I hope you were encouraged today and know that Jesus is Messiah. That's the beautiful name that was given to God. So we have discovered all these days, Jesus is Jehovah Ra Jireh, Jesus is Jehovah Nisi, Jesus is Jehovah Rapha, Jesus is Jehovah Shalom, and Jesus is Messiah. Jesus is your Messiah. He is your Messiah. Ask him to come into your heart. Be the Lord and Savior and the lover of your soul. May God bless you. Have a blessed day. It's a Saturday here. God bless you. Bye.